think I was gonna talk about this quest, then fudge you! This ain't gonna be the only video for today, but we're gonna do another thing. But still, nonetheless, what the f- <sighs> Hoyaverse can't let my girl let me be happy for like 10 minutes! Like, hot damn, dude! Alright, so, obviously, I played the Archon Quest last night. That junk honestly has a lot of shit in it that I was not necessarily expecting, but I'm kind of glad we got, because I'm not gonna lie, it's starting to feel like, oh, we're actually starting to prepare to wrap up the whole story of Genshin, because that's what it feels like, right? Especially when Dane just basically is like, yeah, I know who the actual sinner is. Better yet, I know five people that are actually like that. That was supposed to protect Conria when the bullshit happened with the Dane Archons, but honestly, they was whack. They did drugs in the corner, and they was not there. So when it comes down to it, you know, there is some names that we heard, but there is some names that we didn't think was going to be a part of it, honestly. Or at least I didn't think it was going to be a part of it. Which is Gold Ryan Daughter, which is Albedo's creator. Then you also have Sertology the Fowl, which is Skirk's master. And then at the, you know, we had like the Visionary, which we've heard the Visionary before. I don't remember before. I think Skirk also said something about the Visionary, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm not necessarily too, too knowledgeable on who that is. And then like two other people that was also there as well. And one of them just happened to be, I think, Verlof Verlofanir or whatever. Which is now confirmed as Dane's older brother. Damn, the younger brother honestly cleaned up the older brother's mistakes. I understand that too damn well but when it comes down to it though and there's like the other last one which is like the wise corrupt here i think which who the hell is that no effing clue but yeah to just drop all those names especially like the two or three that we know of that's kind of wild that kind of just shows that yeah they're all connected with this conria bullshit so you know that secret's basically out and whatever happens at the end of the game gonna have them heavily involved in it right but also i thought Ryan Daughter was a part of the Hexen Circle too, so how the hell is this working? I, I don't know. Ask somebody that's a keep better lore track than me, honestly. I'm just here to react to this shit. But then we also got to see an adult Kari Bear, which I kind of felt like that's what was going to happen at some point in time. I just didn't know how or when. Then at the very same time, he explained how this whole Luma Fate thing is, which is a fate basically a fate weaving machine essentially which pretty much confirms what you know dane was talking about in the first damn trailer for genshin as a whole or at least a teaser for the other countries saying that you know once he saves you know the travel saves basically the you know beat dane saves his sister he'll be able to you know control fate in some shape form and weave it into whatever he wants it to be which is like okay so that machine has literally everything to do with the end game you know literally everything so how are we gonna go about that don't necessarily know but i'm curious as all hell to figure that out and i was kind of a low-key kind of pissed off at car bear a little bit because i, I mean granted i get why he did what he did right he wanted to use the limit fate to make sure that you know the hilly trails ain't necessarily getting you know any type of mental anguish like he did but at the very same time and i get that the Luma Fate is completed and it's in hands of a group that probably maybe shouldn't need that. Granted, I don't necessarily know what Ether, the Traveler, or whatever, you know, Traveler you use in your version of the game. I don't know what the Traveler is actually planning with that shit, honestly. Because not even Ether even knows what the hell to do with that damn thing. And I'm just like, wait, so you have this Luma Fate shit that can literally, like you know mess a lot of things up or do a lot of crazy things and you don't even know what to do with this shit are you serious right now and that's just kind of how i was feeling honestly but when it comes down to it though he doesn't necessarily know how to use it to his full potential but best believe he's gonna use that bitch against the heavenly principles which everybody hates the damn heavenly principles i suppose though but you know i guess we'll see how that kind of goes also the heavenly principles is all big ass sleeper like hot damn someone destroyed a whole divine chair and you out here still sleeping through that bitch okay i guess so that's just how that goes but when it comes down to it you know 
everybody just hates him. And this kind of made me wonder, honestly. It's like, okay, so if the Abyss literally, or at least on either side, literally just wants to kill the Heavenly Principles and get them out the way, and the Fatui wants to basically do the same thing, except maybe to all gods, but then it's like, okay, so really, if you think about it, everybody just hates the Heavenly Principles. I understand why we're not going to join either. I don't think we're going to join either side, honestly, because Fatui wants to take down, I think, all the gods, and then you also have like the abyss that wants to take down the heavenly principle but then that will cause the whole world to kind of get you know effed over in the worst possible way so at the very end of it it's kind of like we just have three parties that needs the damn machine but only one of them really needs it the most and it's us honestly so that's what it that's what it feels like but no one is denying that they hate the heavenly principles not even the archons honestly which makes me wonder if when it comes down to it with the whole you know cataclysm and conra were they just forced to destroy conra and f over the people there because i feel like that's what they were i feel like that's what they were planning to do right the heaven princess maybe just have more control over them or maybe force them to destroy conra and do what they had to do and they probably didn't like it at all but they just did it because you know that's what was required of them to do because reasons or whatever or whatever and because the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I don't think they just wanted to destroy Conrad like that. Because it's hard for them to talk about at times if you really think about it. And they seem to have some type of regret about the situation. And if they, you know, if, if what I'm saying basically is like true, then it's like, yeah, they kind of just got forced into this. They didn't have a real deal choice as to, you know, how to go about this. Because the head of the principles was like, yo, destroy these people. I'm about to body all y'all in your nations. And they probably couldn't have that shit. So it makes sense for maybe if that is the case to have that to happen. Also, I would say maybe the last thing I would point out is just the fact that, you know, we actually got to honestly have some very interesting dialogue with our sibling, honestly, because I didn't even peep the line where, you know, the one of the travelers was basically like saying the actual traveler name, like whether it's like Ether or Lemieux or whoever you're playing and essentially she was like at least for me with Lamine she was like you're the only person that calls me by my actual name in this world and I was like wait a minute so people really just called them traveler and not know their real name what the actual shit is this this is th that's weird because you gotta think about it Paimon wasn't even you know there and to keep it a stack not even Paimon calls you know Lamine Lamine she just calls her traveler all the damn time so when it comes down to it it really do be kind of strange though, right? It do be kind of strange. But, you know, it is what it is when it comes down to it. Whether that leads into something, I, I, I have literally no clue. There's probably so many other things I want to talk about when it comes down to this quest because of how crazy this was. But honestly, I don't know what else I can possibly say. The only thing I can do, I guess now, is speculate. To kind of think that once we get to Natlon, it's going to be like you know where things changes up completely because we are on the verge of war that nation is already like the nation of war honestly it would not come as a surprise if you know something big happens there that kind of alters the course of what we have to do you know it, it wouldn't come as a surprise if that's the case like i would say expecting that line to be like how usual you know adventures in that country would be but then at the same time, expect like a looming overhead, you know, type of travesty that might come through or something tragic coming through because most likely something will happen there. We probably will save the country like normal, but when it comes down to it, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a lot more to it than what we think, honestly. And then at the very same time, you know, with, you know, potentially meeting up with the captain there from the Fatui or, you know, potentially seeing Colombina join in as well who knows how the hell this might end up going so it might be again some more crazier and other weirdly things that might just end up happening though to be honest it really I don't think we're gonna see the heavenly principles wake up until Schnezh until they try to you know make their plan work out but you know and I have an idea of what Shinesh and I might actually be like so if you really think about the Archons real quick we have to deal with an Archon that basically 
you know, abandon their post in Mondstadt, right? With Vinci. We basically saw Archon retire, which is in leeway with Zhang Li. We saw an Archon being a damn dictator to, you know, their country in Inazuma. We saw people locking away their Archon in Sumeru. We've seen an Archon basically, you know, return their power and be a fake Archon in Fontaine. We potentially have to, you know, see if an Archon is not even there in, you know, Natland. At least that's what people are planning or thinking. That's the theory. And I'm guessing once we get to Shinesh Naya, are we going to have to kill the Archon? Like, literally by our hands? Because that's what it feels like what's kind of leading up. And if, imagine, imagine if we have to literally kill that Archon. And when it comes down to it, that's what wake up the heavenly principles that wouldn't that would honestly make some sense because if you really think about it like yeah you, you could say false lord died but at the same time farina still kind of is here and while she ain't divine she still is a part of her so it wouldn't be too too like you know a bit of a weird thing but then at the very same time it wouldn't come off it would kind of you know be a little bit different if the traveler ended up killing the archon and doing what they had to do and then that's what woke it up because that's not how things were meant to go or something weird comes of that honestly it wouldn't it feels like that's what they're trying to set up honestly so i wouldn't be surprised if snatch and i we end up killing the archon right it's gonna it's gonna be like some year it's gonna be a few years before we get to see that but if it does happen that would not surprise me because of how much things have been adding up right why would we have to kill him? I have no idea. But we'll have to see what ends up happening though. Who knows? But that right there, I just want to put my two cents together regarding the whole quest when it comes to, you know, the whole just quests in the Archon thing in general because this jump was absolutely wild. I just want my baby Lamine to be happy. That's li that's literally all I want, honestly. She shouldn't be going through all this bull. She shouldn't be forgetting memories of meeting her own brother and shit. Like, to be very honest with you, I just want to see her be happy for once in her damn life. You can't let her be happy for 10 seconds, tell you verse. Hi, damn. But that's essentially all I really want to say for this one. So hopefully, you did enjoy it. I'll be seeing you again in the next video where we talk about some OC things and actually talk about the thing that we talked about yesterday. So when it comes down to it, I'll be seeing you very soon.